Okay, so the first thing to review is just the index notation rules we're using in the course. There are only really three rules. The first is that if you have a repeated index, that implies summation over the allowed range of that index. The second rule is that if you have a free index, it implies multiple equations where the multiple equations are generated by looking at all possible combinations of the free indices. And the third is just the definition of the Kronecker delta symbol. Okay, so you know from previous years that if you have a rotation matrix A, which transforms the components of vector x to x prime, then you can write that transformation like this. Uh, and of course that expands to this matrix equation and to these three scalar equations, one scalar equation for each of the components of x prime. And naturally we can write these in index form as just this abbreviated equation down the bottom. Now, it's important to realize that the specific choice of index in an index notation equation is irrelevant. It doesn't actually change the meaning. So on the top line here, I've got these two equations. Uh, on the equation, for the equation on the left, i is a free index and j is a repeated index. For the equation on the right, j is a free index and i is a repeated index. And if we expand both of these, so we expand over j first and then over all the i equations, and on the right we expand over i first and then over all the j equations, you can see that the set of equations that we end up with in both cases is absolutely identical. So with these two equations, the fact that I've exchanged um, i and j between these two equations didn't change the meaning at all. The meaning really comes from the order of the indices after each of the symbols. Now, of course, you know that the inverse of a rotation matrix is its transpose. So if we multiply A transpose by A, we get just an identity matrix. What that means is that we can take our original uh, rotation here, we can multiply both sides by the transpose of A, and we end up with the inverse rotation down the bottom here. Now, in index notation, things are a little bit different, and it's, in a way, slightly unintuitive. So what we can do is start with the original rotation in index notation, which is the one on the top here. And you've seen that this is precisely equivalent to what you get by expanding the matrix equation. Now, what we'll do to make this a bit clearer is to introduce this matrix Bij, which is the transpose of Aij. So we can write each of the components Bij is just Aji. And now we can write the equation for the inverse rotation, this equation here. And where this equation comes from is that equation there. It's just exactly the same equation, except that I've exchanged the role of of A and B, so B is now performing the rotation, and instead of primed coordinates on the left, we've got unprimed coordinates, and instead of unprimed coordinates on the right, we've now got primed coordinates. Okay, so it's just the original rule for rotation, but with B doing the rotation, and of course we know that the primed and unprimed are going to swap sides. Okay, now we can take this same equation and simply exchange the indices i and j. And we've seen from the previous slide that exchanging the indices does not change the meaning of the equation at all. It doesn't change what it expands to. Now we can just substitute the values aij into bji, and we end up with this equation here. Now, if we compare this equation here to the one we started with at the top of the slide, you can see why I say it's a little bit unintuitive, because what we've done effectively is just take this, this Aij matrix and move it to the other side without in, apparently inverting it or doing anything else. Okay, but really this is the way that it works for rotation matrices in index notation. This equation is in fact correct. And then just what we can then do, of course, is take this equation and exchange the i and j indices. And when we exchange the i and j indices, it becomes more apparent that this equation was actually correct, because now you can see that instead of the original A rotation matrix, we've got 
we're now using its transpose to do the rotation. Okay, but this equation here um, that I, I highlighted and I said is a bit unintuitive. That, that's the one to pay attention to to understand that you to know that you understand where this comes from. Okay, so hopefully this little supplement makes it a bit clearer what's going on with these uh, rotations and index notation.